Okay, what is going on everyone? Um, this Monday, I'd like to try out a slightly different style of video. Um, so rather than build up to sort of a grand reveal at the end as to whether a given idea is myth busted or not, um, I'm simply gonna explain a true concept, I'll explain why it works and how you can apply it in the gym. And to just keep things interesting, I think I'm gonna overlay a few clips from my latest workout over the talking bits. Um, so this is some footage from my last upper body workout uh, that I did last night. And if you'd like to screenshot here, uh, you can follow along and uh, so here's the full workout and I'll also have it linked in the description box below. Okay so the topic for this video is muscle memory. Um, so first what is it and how does it work? Uh, so in the most basic sense muscle memory simply refers to the fact that it's much easier to regain lost muscle mass than it is to put on new muscle mass in the first place. So if you trained for say three or four years and built a good amount of muscle and then took say six months or so off and you shrunk up a little bit, uh, it won't take you even close to the same amount of time as those initial three or four years to get all your lost size back it'll come back pretty quickly. Um, so prior to about 2010, the main scientific explanation for muscle memory was based on neurological factors. So changes that occur at the level of the brain and the nervous system that allow you to easily relearn a given task or activity that you haven't performed in a long time. And this is because these neural adaptations that take place when you learn a new movement pattern or activity tend to stay sort of written in. Um, this is why you don't easily forget how to ride a bike and it's why it won't take you nearly as long to relearn your squat after a long break as it took you to learn it from day one. Um, but as I see it, this mostly just explains the performance aspect of muscle memory. And it doesn't account for the fact that even if you didn't do the same exercises, muscle size still does bounce back very quickly as well. Um, so in 2010, a landmark paper published out of the University of Oslo in Norway discovered something pretty groundbreaking about muscle memory. But before we dig into that, I think it's important to first remember that pretty much every cell has a nucleus and it can be thought of as the sort of control center of the cell. Now muscle cells are a little bit different in that they actually have many nuclei. Um, so they're a sort of rare type of multi-nucleated cell. And you can think of these muscle nuclei, called myonuclei, having a role of overseeing a certain area of the muscle cell. Um, so once you start to grow a muscle, uh, you begin to max out the amount of area that a given nucleus can oversee and the muscle simply has to stop growing. Um, so at that point, the only way to add new muscle is to lay down or create new nuclei. Okay, so back to the study. So these Norwegian researchers used imaging techniques to figure out what happens to myonuclei during periods of detraining. And what the results showed was that myonuclei are protected from the usually very highly apoptotic activity found in inactive muscle tissue. Um, so in other words, even as the muscle shrinks, the nuclei tend to stick around. Um, so let's have a look at the model that they developed. Um, so when you first lift weights, little repair cells floating around a muscle cell like satellites called satellite cells, fuse with muscle cells and donate their nuclei. Now, once there are more nuclei in the cell, there's more space that they can oversee. And so the cell grows. Now, when you detrain or stop lifting for a while, all of that muscle size starts to go away. So atrophy occurs, uh, but the nuclei still stick around. So then when you start lifting again, it's so much easier to get the size back because you not only skip that first step of satellite cell fusion and nuclear donation, you also now have all these new nuclei ramping up new muscle protein synthesis. Now it's worth noting that this paper, while highly influential, was carried out on mice. Still, their model remains the prevailing one today, eight years after publication. But this year, the first human study investigating the mechanism of muscle memory was published. And this was covered in a recent issue of the Mass Research Review. But basically, this study had subjects trained for seven weeks, take seven weeks off, and then train for seven weeks again. And what they found was that changes that happen at the level of DNA stay in place and sort of don't go away during those seven weeks of non-lifting. And of course, these genetic or epigenetic modifications are responsible for pumping out new muscle protein. Um, so the actual sort of memory is almost literally written directly into the DNA of your muscle cells. Um, so this was a pretty exciting finding. And as written in the article summary, while the study doesn't tell us exactly how long these epigenetic changes last, they definitely last at least seven weeks, but it's possible that the modifications can last for years to enhance the responsiveness to retraining after very long layoffs. Um, so let's say you used to lift in high school and then stopped and started training again in your 40s, you might still bounce back faster because of that high school lifting. 
Um, so in terms of practical application, I'd say that there are two main takeaways from this body of research as I see it. So the first is that if you do take a few weeks off from the gym, uh, you probably don't have all that much to worry about. Um, in fact, one 2012 study from Ogasawa and colleagues found that when you look at hypertrophy of the triceps and the pec major in either 24 weeks of continuous training or periodic training with six week training cycles spaced with three week periods of no training, even though muscle size in the periodic group was more sort of up and down, at the end of the 24 weeks, you basically end up at the same spot. Um, so the occasional training break isn't gonna make or break your progress over the long run. And I think this is especially salient in the case of injury. Um, I think it just makes so much more sense to rest and heal up rather than force training sessions, which I think in the grand scheme of things may not even make a significant difference in terms of where you end up due to muscle memory. Now that of course isn't an excuse to always be taking training breaks. Um, you don't progress that way, uh, but in the grand scheme of things, an occasional training break probably isn't setting you back uh, as much as you might otherwise think. Um, the second and somewhat more subtle takeaway is that I think you should be careful when evaluating the effectiveness of a program that you run after a long training break or a long layoff. Um, the chances are whatever program you run after a long break is gonna lead to pretty impressive results simply due to muscle memory. Um, there might not be anything all that special about that specific training program or style. Um, so just be aware of that and try to evaluate the effectiveness of a given strategy in the context of your typical progressive training, not after a training break. Um, so anyways, that's gonna conclude it for this one, guys. Uh, let me know if you like this style with the training footage overlaying the talking clips. Um, and I can continue to do these in the future. And before we go, uh, I have to thank a new sponsor for supporting this video, and that's Blinkist. Um, so Blinkist is a really cool app uh, that I've been using a lot myself lately. And basically what it does is it solves the problem of there not being enough time to really sit down and read a full book or even listen to a full audiobook. Uh, so what Blinkist does is it takes the most important sort of need to know information from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses it all down to just 15 minutes. And you can either listen to these summaries or or blinks as they call them uh, through audio form, which is what I prefer to do. Um, or you can go through and just read them and it should take you about 15 minutes. Uh, so I just finished up listening to Communicate and Influence by Ben and Kelly Decker, uh, which I found to be really helpful in terms of improving my own communication and presentation style, uh, even for these videos. Um, so if you'd like to give Blinkist a try, you can go to blinkist.com forward slash Jeff and the first 100 people will get a free one week trial with access to all the books. And you'll also get 20% off if you wanna sign up for membership from there. Um, so 100 spots, I would imagine, are gonna probably fill up pretty fast. Uh, so make sure you're one of the first 100. To click that first link down there in the description and get started with your free trial. Um, so thank you to Blinkist for supporting this video and the channel, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please leave me a like if you made it this far. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys all here next Monday for a new Mythbust Monday video. So, thanks for watching guys.